very proud to be the premier sponsor of Ignite Northwest. Uh, and the Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, and Sandpoint regions have been seeing new entrepreneurs, startups, and tech companies come in at an accelerating rate. And Ignite Northwest has done an incredible job of that. And we're here to celebrate that tonight. And with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Tom Simpson, uh, our CEO. Tom. Wow. CEO. Richard alluded to, uh, Richard is my boss. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow, you've never applauded me before. Um, so yes, Richard's my boss. You know, he's not only you know president and CFO of Lee and Hayes, but he's uh, chairman of the Ignite board, and his firm is uh, uh, the premier sponsor of Ignite. So really appreciate all the support that you and your firm have provided to us, and really all the support that you guys have done for the companies in our region. It's been you know, absolutely tremendous. Um, so I lead Ignite. Um, the CEO title is a little bit kind of strange when you only have a three-person organization. But uh, so it's me and it's Cindy who was up here before, and Cindy kind of runs our marketing and uh, events and programs, and really is in charge for all the logistics tonight. So really appreciate what what Cindy has done. And then April, right in front here, is our. And April hates attention, so if you can applaud her. Five-minute speech. So April is kind of a typical accountant, chief finance officer, likes to be quiet. But she not only handles kind of you know all our administrative stuff and financial stuff, but also our Ignite loan funds, which has been a tremendous resource for companies in the area. I think since inception, Ignite has put about eight million dollars into about 29 uh, companies in the area, uh, many of which are here tonight. So uh, um, really appreciate all that you're doing. So also, I uh, want to welcome uh, everybody here today. Um, uh, I, I love the events that we have through Ignite and the Spokane Angel Alliance because it brings together really a fascinating cross-section of people in the community. Uh, here tonight, we not only have representatives of the 25 plus five, we have a number of service providers that are uniquely providing um, services to entrepreneurs and startups and tech companies in the region. We have a number of business leaders and we have the mayor of Spokane, Nadine. We have the chair former mayor, Nadine. So just, just, a, just a great cross-section of people. So thank you for attending. Um, tonight we've got a, a, a content-rich program, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's filled with fascinating stories about companies in the region, but it's also brief. So hopefully we'll be done in an hour or so, and then we can kind of get back to uh, enjoying uh, talking to each other. Um, it's going to lead off tonight with a, a keynote speech from Steve McDonald, who is the new uh, Director of uh, Economic Development for the City of Spokane. And Steve kind of comes to us from Los Angeles and provides really a unique and fresh perspective to the city, so we're delighted to have him. And for those of you who may have read the uh, New York Times uh, on Sunday, he was prominently featured uh, throughout that, that article. And, uh, that article was a bit controversial. I was kind of hoping the reporter, who I spent a lot of time with, would uh, highlight uh, more of the virtues of the region, but he took a little bit of a different tack, but I still think net-net it was, it was positive to gain the exposure for the city. Um, and then we'll kind of conclude with uh, the awards for tonight. We have five different categories, and uh, Tribe Media, who's represented here tonight, has sent some wonderful videos to kind of highlight the stories of each of those companies. Um, a little bit about Ignite. Uh, Ignite attracts, funds, enlightens, and mentors explosively growing companies in the Spokane, uh, Coeur d'Alene, and Sandpoint region. Um, and, and perhaps we've done a little bit too good of a job of attracting based on the tone of the article in the New York Times on Sunday. Um, so this region is really experiencing tremendous growth in not only the number, but also the quality of startups and companies expanding to our region. Um, and I think, and, and, and it's bringing in as a result, um, tremendous talent from outside the region. And I think we, we've benefited in part because of the, uh, uh, the shift to remote work and the acceptance of remote work, um, we're able to bring in people in this region who are drawn by our quality of life. 
And I've got a lot of uh, examples. I'll provide some just anecdotal one. Uh, tonight here, we have Dave Ahoja from Paris Inc. Uh, David moved his company from Seattle to Spokane, and he's working on technology to uh, help people with ALS and other neurological disorders to better communicate. Um, I got a call uh, a couple weeks ago from a CEO of a very high profile Seattle startup, well funded, that called me up and said, hey Tom, I just want to let you know, I'm moving to Spokane, we're leaving Seattle, we're coming over here, I've got a large family and I want to be in Spokane and we're going to grow our company over here. Um, there's a couple of other companies that you're probably going to hear more about in the future, one called Taki and one called Markable. Both of those companies are uh, backed and founded by well-known entrepreneurs that have found themselves in Spokane, and I'm sure you'll hear more about those. And then I'll kind of conclude with uh, uh, a, uh, I also got a call recently from a venture capital uh, ist, not a venture capital fund, but a venture capitalist in Seattle, who also said, you know what, Tom, we're moving to the Spokane region. So we're bringing in so much talent that I believe is really going to continue to fuel this tremendous growth in startups and tech companies in the Spokane region. Now, that's half of the equation. The other half of the equation is how we manage it. So I, but I'm gonna leave that to somebody else and I'm confident that we'll, we'll find a solution to that problem. Um, so tonight is a 25 plus five and, and the inspiration for the 25 plus five uh, came to me, I think it was around 2019. I'm not gonna call on you, David, or maybe I will, but um, in early 2019, the first, I think it was like the first quarter of 2019, three companies in Spokane all raised over $10 million in new investment. That's kind of a big deal. It's even kind of a big deal for Seattle. So when that happened, I kind of went around Spokane and I asked a number of the leaders of the community, and maybe including David Condon, hey, could you name three companies in Spokane that just raised 10 million? And I'm teasing David here, but he wasn't the only leader of the community that maybe was only to, able to name one of them. And so it dawned on me that if we really want to be an entrepreneurial hub and grow and attract companies, we ourselves have to know who those companies are. So I came up with this list of the Ignite 25 plus five. The first year was just a list and Paul Reed graciously published it in the newspaper. The second year we had a virtual event co-sponsored with the Journal of Business. And this year it's turned into this wonderful physical event, again, co-sponsored with uh, the Journal of Business and, and who knows where it goes, but uh, um, I'm really pleased that we're building awareness for what we have, because I've always viewed our region as kind of been um, a little bit too humble and not really talking about what we have. Whereas other regions, you know, Seattle, Boise, Austin, they really promote what they're doing. And I think we need a little bit more of that here. So the companies on the list represent really a, a broad range of industries. Um, people always ask me, what, what's the concentration in Spokane? We don't really have a concentration. We just have uh, a wide variety of really unique companies. And I'm just gonna quickly highlight uh, some of them. Uh, Aquaphor, a company that's revolutionizing hard surface building materials and improving urban uh, stormwater systems led by Greg Johnson. A Cloud Engage, led by uh, Paul Wagner, a provider of tools to personalize websites to increase in, uh, engagement and revenues. And that's a company that had been in Portland and then Paul moved it to Spokane. Uh, Gestalt Diagnostics, a, a leader in digital pathology here in Spokane, led by uh, Dan Work, a, a serial entrepreneur. Hydroside, a post balls company that designs, manufactures, and sells advanced irrigation systems for agriculture, led by Dana Moore. Hypersciences, uh, led by Mark, uh, Mark Russell, fascinating guy. Mark actually had the idea for Uber before Uber. He once presented it to the Spokane uh, Angel Alliance. It's called Zippy Go Go. Mark has like 46 patents and is uh, using extreme velocity, extreme velocity to almost do everything, mining, drilling, uh, throwing things into space, tunneling, fascinating company. Medcurity, led by Amanda Hepper, who's here tonight, and Joe Galatly, that are uh, have a uh, compliance uh, solution for HIPAA. S2 Media, a, a, a woman-backed company that is uh, a woman-owned company, and the, the, the founders are all here tonight, uh, that is using culture media for different applications in, in, in clinical and industrial markets. 
Spiceology, like everybody knows Spiceology. Uh, Chip's here tonight, the CEO, uh, the, the, the nation's uh, uh, fastest growing spice company. Tamarack Aerospace, a, a Sandpoint company. I hear a woo back there. Uh, that I'm a pilot, they build winglets that to make airplanes uh, way more efficient, extend their range, uh, reduce um, fuel uh, consumption. And then lastly, I went alphabetical order here, by the way, uh, 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 Vega, a, uh, a, a cloud automation company led by Chris Bleisner, who is a serial entrepreneur, started a number of companies. So that's just kind of a, a really quick, rapid fire summary of all the amazing companies that we have here in Spokane. And you'll hear about more tonight. <laughs> So lastly, I also just want to kind of thank our sponsors for tonight because obviously we couldn't have this you know, tremendous venue at Barrister, amazing wine and, and food catered by Beacon Hill if, if it weren't for our sponsors. Uh, our premier sponsor is Clifton Larson Allen and I know Kevin uh, Cox and his team are here. Um, fantastic resource for emerging companies of, of all types. Uh, our media sponsor I've alluded to earlier is the uh, Journal of Business and Paul Reed is here and he'll He'll be up next, and uh, they've just been a terrific partner of mine. I mean, they, they do a great job of covering business and, and emerging companies here in Spokane. Title sponsor, Primera, David Condon. Um, I could say a lot of things, but you just kind of speak for yourself. Obviously, a great organization here in Spokane. We all use them. Uh, Uptick Studios, uh, Matt Collins and uh, Charlie Wolf. Uh, fabulous, uh, expanding architecture firm here in town. Uh, I have kind of a special um, a relationship with them because they designed my house a couple years ago, which I love. And then uh, lastly, our kind of our, our media sponsor is Tribe Media, and we've got uh, James and Andrew here, and they're really a very close partner of us, of, of Ignite, in creating uh, all of our videos, our marketing campaigns, and you'll see some of their work tonight. Cindy, I think I exceeded my time allotment, but you gave me a long list of things you wanted me to cover, so I tried to cover them all. So with that, I'm gonna just uh, turn the mic over to uh, Paul Reed. Of the uh, journal believe having a vibrant. <laughs> well, now there might be a good thing. <laughs> One of the things that Ignite does is we enlighten entrepreneurs. By enlightening, we put together a series of programs where oftentimes we bring in speakers and we bring them in to tell their stories, tell their background, how they got there, uh, what inspired them, their successes and their failures. And I find it is a very beneficial way for entrepreneurs to get exposed to a wide variety of people, companies, ideas, and cultures. Our enlightening programs include Ignite Talks, which is our flagship speaker program featuring successful entrepreneurs, experts, and active investors. Ignite Interviews, a vodcast featuring local innovators, and Ignite Spotlights, a video series that shines the light on explosively growing startups. Ignite also has two large events each year. The Ignite 25 plus 5 is a celebration of the 25 fastest growing startups in the Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, and Sandpoint area. And we co-produce Sparks Weekend with Limelight Technology, which is for entrepreneurs to pitch their concept and create a minimal viable product with the possibility of winning an investment award to create their company. IgniteMatch.Works is Ignite's job platform that matches talent from across the Pacific Northwest with innovative companies. Ignite Loft is our co-working space for entrepreneurs to incubate their concepts and create new startups in Spokane. You know, the funding mechanisms that Ignite offers is really one of my favorite parts about Ignite. We can start with the Mind to Market uh, pre-seed fund, which is a pool of capital that is dedicated to companies at the earliest stage. It might just be an idea. After that, we have Ignite's loan funds, which is non-dilutive capital for an emerging company. After that, the companies may be eligible for the Spokane Angel Alliance, which is a network of over 100 angel investors in the region. In addition to that, I have uh, the Kickstart uh, family of angel funds. And that's a pool of capital that can really go into companies at almost any stage. So really the full spectrum. So what opportunities does Ignite provide for mentorship? Really it's twofold. 
Uh, first of all, Ignite has a proprietary group of mentors. These individuals have agreed to meet at a very early stage and to hear their idea and, and provide some you know, constructive input. Number two, we regularly have office hours, you know, generally once or twice a month, where I will meet with, um, again, a company at any stage that is looking for input and guidance on their plan or fundraising or, or, or really any aspect of growing the business for which you're looking for input. Great video, by the way. And and uh, who here, just a quick raise of hand, how many here think that Tom and Cindy have done such a great job of catalyzing? <laughs> and Tom's cool because we're about the same age, but he can do a handstand. I barely can get him on his platform. Uh, so so he's, as he said, I'm Paul Reed, a publisher of the Journal of Business, and it's, it's a privilege, really, for us to be involved in this in this great uh, event and great program. And, and for two reasons, one is the movement, right? This movement, all of you here in this room, is so critically important to Spokane's economy and vitality. Uh, we, we just don't give it enough credit um, in, in all that we do, right? People ask me about economic development all the time and I, I turn it around and say, so what do you mean? What, tell me your definition of economic development. So sometimes they say, well, it's all about outbound marketing and recruiting. That's what economic development is. Others say, no, it's about retaining and growing the businesses we already have here. And others say, no, it's about business climate, infrastructure, um, advocacy, and talent, right? But some, some say, no, it's about launching new businesses and mentoring those businesses. And you know what I say? I say that all of those are true. Good economic development includes all of those components. But what I also say is that we oftentimes focus on the traditional economic development pieces and we don't give enough credit to the entrepreneurial spirit that's here and alive in this room. But tonight we do. Tonight, and that's why I'm so pleased to be here because tonight we honor 30 entrepreneurial companies that have made a mark on this community and we just don't pay enough attention to it, and we don't celebrate, as Tom said. We, we're in one of those towns, we do a lot of cool things, but we don't celebrate the cool things. So tonight, we're celebrating those, two, those cool things. So it's a privilege for the Journal to be a part of this. That's enough about me. My job up here tonight is to introduce our keynote speaker, whom I just met just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Steve McDonald was confirmed as the director of the City of Spokane's new Community and Economic Development Division last August. It's a big job, uh, encompassing economic development services, city planning, development services like review and permitting, and code and parking enforcement. Who wants that job, folks? <laughs> Prior to coming to Spokane, Steve was managing director of SDS Capital Group a Los Angeles-based organization that manages over $1 billion in impact investment funds focused on economically challenged areas. Before that, he was president of Film LA, a large entertainment-focused economic development organization. Early in his career, Steve created an initiative under Los Angeles Mayor Richard Riordan to spearhead retention, expansion, and attraction of businesses citywide, and was bureau chief, chief of LA's Department of Building Safety. Quite the resume. Steve earned an MBA from Pepperdine University and a Bachelor in Marketing from San Diego State University. He and his wife moved in October with their Irish Terrier Murphy. Please give a Spokane welcome to Steve McDonald. you, Tom. Um, the first event I went to in Spokane back in September, even before my wife came here, was a Ignite Northwest event. And I met you, and from then on, you've been incredibly gracious with your time, and I've enjoyed talking with you. And when Tom asked me to be the keynote speaker here, 
Um, I was, first of all, I was taken aback because I've only been here for five months now today. And then I started to get a little worried about it because I'm thinking like, what do I know? What, what can I say here? And then as the further I started thinking about it, I said, you know what? No pressure, because I'm just new here, and if I say something that you don't agree with, you can just say, oh, he doesn't know, he's new. <laughs> so there we are. And so Paul gave a, a background, but one thing I wanted to say about that, I've been very lucky to have spent just about half my career in the public sector and half in the private sector, and I think that is something that I've enjoyed, that back and forth, and I think there needs to be more of that, because we need people from the private sector to introduce ideas in the, in the public sector, and having that back and forth has been really interesting to me, and I think it's something that we need to see more of um, in any part of government. Um, the big question is, why Spokane? And I get asked that question up here in Spokane. I get asked it by my friends back home. And, you know, um, it really comes down to uh, visiting Spokane. We came up here uh, the first time, I, I believe it was six years ago, or a little more than six years ago. Our son was very interested in going to Gonzaga University. So we took him up here as a junior in high school. He loved the, loved the um, city, he loved the university. And so then we visited, he came here and we, for four years and we were visiting him over that time, he decided to stay. Um, and so lots of visits to Spokane, we really liked it. And my wife and I would say, you know, that would be a great place to move to, you know, years down the road. That, let's keep that in mind, that's beautiful up there. Well, lo and behold, my, my son decides to stay here after school, and then a little thing called COVID happens. And uh, boy, does that make you think about your priorities and other things. And then COVID in Los Angeles, in particular, was a particularly hard time. Um, just an absolute absence of, um, of any kind of civil order, um, no leadership going on, which is still the case right now, which really kind of cemented in an idea that maybe we should move quicker. Uh, and then a random search on the Spokane website with a position open that I really had fun with when I was at City of LA doing economic development. So that cemented it. That's why Spokane and we're all in and it's helpful to have a really uh, adventurous wife who's willing to pick up everything from LA and come up here. So. Thank you. So um, as was mentioned, I'm the Director of Community and Economic Development. Uh, you may have heard we have a new planning director, Spencer Gardner, who's been in the news here. He's fantastic. If, if I do anything, I told the mayor today on the way over here, if I do just one thing, it's bringing in the right guy to be the Director of Planning, and Spencer is that right guy. He's very smart. Uh, my, my maxim is higher, smarter than you are, and I did that with Spencer. He's a really bright guy, and he's gonna help us get there uh, it's not easy, but kind of doing some of the things we need to do to get more housing here and do the kind of development we need to do. So um, three cheers for Spencer. So I'm gonna be talking about um, some opportunities that I've seen up here that just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> and that's uh, the growing startup culture, which you guys know about more about than I do. Um, real estate development, which I see opportunities all over the place. Um, the food and beverage culture, which I think is important and ties into the quality of life and then the quality of life issue, which is a no-brainer for, for Spokane, for someone coming from LA, for sure. Um, so it's, it's obvious that the Spokane region has a vibrant startup culture, that you're all here. The events I've gone to that Tom's put on have been really exciting events with amazing companies and just have a real um, energy to them. And so I really appreciate that. So there's obviously something happening here in that respect. And I think it's in part because of the support and the kind of the ecosystem that's developed here with you know, Ignite Northwest and the Spokane Angels and things going on in the UD. Um, there's, there's just a lot of support here and that's helpful, very helpful. Uh, it's been helpful obviously to attract firms here, uh, spawn firms here, and we're gonna be hearing a lot more about firms like Treasury 4, Dorsey, Parrots, and a number of other uh, great companies here later on. The, the other thing I've noticed I'm kind of in that startup area is life sciences, health services, that's obviously seems to be a focus here. And while Jubilant Hollister is not a, uh, a startup by any means, they're a long-standing company in Spokane, uh, going out to the company and visiting with the CEO and hearing about their $90 million expansion that's gonna add a couple hundred employees to their already existing 400 employees that they have out in the Northeast area. I mean, that's a tremendous company 
that some people don't even know exist, but that's a great uh, anchor to have here. And then on the startup end, um, you, you've got Selkirk Pharmaceutical over in the West Plains, which is another amazing company. They're finishing up their 150,000 square foot building, state-of-the-art facility. They're gonna have 300 people working in that building, and then they've just purchased adjacent land uh, that they're gonna be expanding to. So there's a lot of good things happening here in, in that life sciences arena, in, particularly in that contract uh, manufacturing area. So in addition to the startup culture being uh, you know, increasing and growing here, that's starting to be noticed elsewhere, that's clear. Um, from the beginning of COVID until now, Spokane has had the second largest increase in jobs posted in Indeed of any city in the country. Uh, Boise was first, I believe, and then Spokane second. So that is I think that reflects both people that are doing remote work here from someone or somewhere else because they want to be here in Spokane, but it's also new jobs that are developing here. It's a combination of that of that both. So that's really something that tells you something's going on that we need to look and dig for. Um, the relationships that are here, the community networks are allowing these innovators that many of, of which are in this room um, to do what they want to do but do it in a place that they want to live, where the founders want to live and where the employees want to live. And that's the key. That's that kind of connective tissue to the quality of life. So on the real estate end, um, we've got, uh, there's no doubt that we have a housing crisis. You've heard lots about it. It's, it's true. We do have a housing crisis, but I do want to point out it's the kind of housing crisis you'd rather have. You'd rather have our housing crisis than divestment, people, as housing prices going down, people leaving the area. So we do, we, we do have an issue. We need to, we need to, uh, work on it, but it, it could be worse. <laughs> let me, let me put it that way. When we talk about crisis. This one truly is, I believe, more of an opportunity. But let me tell you some of the challenges that we have. Um, just a short five years ago, the average selling price, or, or the 50% of the houses sold were sold for $200,000 or less in the Spokane region. And last year, by the end of the year, it was less than 5%. So that's a huge movement in a very fast period of time. Um, that doesn't typically happen in areas. So that's a, that's a challenge. Um, Another challenge is Spokane has a very high percentage of single family home zoning. So a majority of the zoning in the city, and much more than other areas, um, is single family zoned. So that makes it harder to then go about providing more density and the types of uh, variety of housing at different housing uh, price points that we need. You know, we need cottage housing, and we need townhomes, and we need um, row houses and, and condos are a tougher issue, I understand, in Washington. But we need all these types of housing here and we need them at different price points. And that's critical. It's critical because this lack of housing and affordable housing will harm our economy over time if we don't continue to address it. And we are working on it, um, uh, talking to the mayor on the way over here. We're, we're trying all kinds of different things, but it does take a while to have hold. And part of that is long standing zoning issues that take a while to unwind. But we've got the right people in place now to work on that and we're, we're working hard at it. But without an adequate supply of housing, um, one of the other problems is trying to attract and keep talent here. You know, all these great ideas that are germinating here, the great folks that are uh, graduating from schools here, we want to be able to keep them here and so we have to have that housing in place. And also, for people less fortunate, uh, lower income folks, the best way to build you know, equity and wealth is obviously owning a home. So we have to have those opportunities for them as well. So that's what we're working on. On the real estate, on the commercial side, one thing that really is appealing about Spokane that maybe people that are already here don't realize is there's amazing neighborhoods here and they all have distinct character. When you compare a city the size of Spokane to you know, a similar sized city like Boise, they don't have as much distinctive character, character to all these neighborhoods. And Spencer Gardner, the planning director, um, told me, and he's looked into this, he, he studied all these cities before he moved here, um, and he said it's because this city was built on a streetcar grid. Um, and what that does is it creates these nodes, and uh, with commercial development and these different uh, corridors and areas, 
and there's been a number of cities in the U.S. that have been uh, developed that way, but other cities that we compete with don't really have that character of these neighborhoods. And some people take them for granted here, but you know, Garland's a great neighborhood. West Central, East Central, Hillier, um, these are all neighborhoods that have a unique character, and I'm just naming a few. Um, but that, that, that is something that's really important. That's a very key um, issue when, you're, when you've got these commercial areas, you wanna build some more dense housing around those commercial areas so they support those businesses and create a walkable, livable neighborhood. And that's what we're trying to do um, now with some of the changes that we're doing. Um, and then uh, on the industrial side, we have some opportunities in the uh, public development authorities. We have three of them, one in the Northeast, one in the West Plains called S3R3, and one in the University District. And all of those are huge assets to the city. And um, uh, Northeast and, and West Plains being more industrial. And in those industrial areas, the land is crucial for us, important economic development-wise, because when you bring in manufacturers and industrial companies, the wages, the benefits tend to be higher. Not all the jobs require a college education. The economic multiplier effect is there. So we need to nurture um, our industrial land and not lose it. Uh, having, having opportunities to bring in manufacturers is really key for us. But we do need to invest some infrastructure dollars in those areas as well. Um, so talking about room to grow, does anybody know what the red <laughs> Does it make there? Anybody have those are surface parking lots, absolutely right. Wow. So when people say, and this is just the greater downtown area. So when people say there's no room, you know, we can't really we can't really do density. I mean, that is the poster child for infill development and the fact that we have this huge capacity to do stuff. A lot of people don't realize I, I hope Daniel from Diamond Parking isn't here, but when you, when you, have, when you have surface parking lot, it is, it is absolutely, a, it kills pedestrian activity. There's very little economic activity going on. Um, it doesn't pay a lot of taxes to government, so it's not a win. And in Daniel's defense from, from Diamond, he's, uh, we're actually working with him and he's looking uh, to put affordable housing with a developer from the west side on a couple of parcels. So that's starting to happen now, but that's, that's, that's just downtown. That, that's what we have is available land for housing, more density, commercial, um, uh, commercial type businesses. Um, and then the other uh, area that just really excites me, and I think the mayor's maybe tired of hearing me talk about it, I know my wife is, the North Bank area, and you can go to the next slides, uh, this just shows the podium, which is fantastic, which is one of the newest uh, facilities there, and then you can go to the next slide. But the North Bank, I make the statement when I see people and talk to them about this, it will be the most vibrant sports and entertainment and residential district in the country. I'm not talking about for cities our size or anything. The, the number of venues and the activity that's gonna be going on there is incredible. It's not happening anywhere else. So you've got, um, you've got the podium, which if you haven't been in the podium, you need to see that. It's, it's the only indoor track and field uh, facility west of the Mississippi, and it's the most modern one. They expect all kinds of records to be broken there over the years. There's a US track and field um, event taking place there this weekend, by the way. And it's just beautiful architecture from the outside on the inside. And it has some dual purpose. They're gonna be doing um, jujitsu and other types of events, even concerts inside it. But it's a beautiful facility. So then right across the way, you have the arena. We all know about the arena. That's the oval area right in the center of the map. Um, the arena, professional, professional soccer, huge concerts, including a little one that's coming here soon uh, with an next beetle or something. I heard something about my wife told me about it. And uh, so you've got that professional hockey, all those events. And then you have the football stadium that will be also a soccer stadium just north of the podium. Two professional soccer teams, a, a women's and a men's team will be there. Football going on, concerts. And then two large, at least two, large residential mixed use, um, 20 plus story residential towers. So with all that packed into an area that is that small, and then you have Kendall Yards just further west, I mean, it's, it's gonna be an incredible district. And, and you, everyone here should know that. Um, I wish I was here a few years earlier to buy a little parcel of land or something, but I just don't. It, it is, it is going to be something. Yeah. Uh, 
the next thing I wanted to talk about is the food and beverage culture, which is near and dear to my heart and my stomach. But this place we've seen as we've come up here over the last six years is just incredible new restaurants. I mean, COVID has been a damper, obviously, but we're getting past that. Great restaurants, great chefs, and then the whole beverage uh, industry up here, the, you know, the craft beverage with the ciders and the beers and wine, uh, the distilleries. I mean, it's just amazing. And that ties into that quality of life thing. When people like my wife and I come from Los Angeles, we're used to finding certain restaurants and coming here, we found so many great restaurants. I mean, really good restaurants. And that's key and there's more and more of that coming. So I think that's a, something that's really important. Um, the other thing that um, people don't think about is Spokane County alone has over 2,500 farms, most of them family farms, <coughs> producing all kinds of unique things. And that's something I think we need to integrate more. So one of the opportunities I think is more around food halls and celebrating some of the local farming and their products and then local beverages and food. We really need food halls in this town. There's common in other cities and we have enough going on here that we should be having that too. So I'm hoping there's some uh, uh, developers out there with some, some ideas and some places and you can ask me, I've got a few buildings where I think it would be great to do that in. But I think that would be really helpful. And also food halls and farmers markets oftentimes act as a little mini incubator for food industry and food and beverage people. So I mean, I think that's a really good thing that we need here in this area. And then the last uh, but not least is quality of life because really ultimately we're all here because we enjoy the quality of life. The reason we moved here is because there's a great quality of life here. Um, we need to continue to improve it and be careful about it. Uh, market it. Um, you guys know it all, the lakes, the rivers, the ski resorts, the parks, especially Riverfront Park. I mean, what an amazing asset for a city. But really, most importantly, it's really about that. Wow. So, you know, that, that is, that's the main point. Like, it's about the river. And even more than the river, it's about the falls. Like, when you come here and you have a downtown like we have right next to a river going through the falls like it is, that's what it's about. We should never forget it. It's, that is a key center point. And I think that's in part and parcel why all of us are here or love to be here. So with that, uh, thank you very much. And I'd like to uh, ask Mark Gustafson to come up. Mark Gustafson. I work at Avista. Uh, my old day job was director of innovation and strategy, and now I'm leading a new startup, a subsidiary of Avista called Avista Edge. And speaking of subsidiaries, when I was studying to be in the energy industry in 1977 at a grade school called Farwell in the Mead District, I uh, didn't know it, but at the time, Avista formerly known as Washington Water Power, was right in the lake here. Let me press the just. <laughs> the light follows you, Mark. Oh, right there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> 1977, a little company out of Hauser Lake, Idaho, in a garage, Washington Water Power, now a Vista, and some employees had a startup called Itron. And ITRON, of course, became a world leader in utility metering technology. And we've heard the story. They're still here, of course, in Liberty Lake as their headquarters. They're a global leader. And it's, a, it's an amazing flywheel. But along the way, of course, the folks at ITRON learned a little bit about global finance and treasury. And the flywheel is working. And I'm happy and proud on behalf of Avista today to announce Ignite 25 plus 25, winner of the best new B2B company, Treasury 4. Steve, we've got a video. Don't, don't play the video just yet. I just, I, real quick, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the folks at Treasury 4 as Steve comes up and their backgrounds. 
these are some of the founders and some of the folks that are working hard at Treasury 4. Ed Berry, he was the assistant treasurer at ITRON for six years. Chuck McAtee was the CIO at ITRON for 15 years. Nathan Brown was in global finance and treasury at ITRON for 12 years. And accepting today's award, Steve Helmbrecht, Treasury Force President and CEO. Steve was the CFO at ITRON for nearly 10 years. Congratulations, Steve and team. through the collaborative experience that Steve, Nathan, and I had working together at ITRON, where we built really one of the best global treasury management system architectures out there. We won a global industry award in 2014. Treasury 4 is a SaaS platform. We're developing software to be used by corporates to manage their cash and also their legal entities. Most cases, they're being managed currently in spreadsheets. So we're moving them onto a SaaS-based platform and we see tremendous opportunity to grow. Treasury 4 sits at the intersection of technology, finance, and treasury. And if you consider the founders and the management team, we have experts in all of those areas, which is really what makes us unique. We are proud that Treasury 4 is headquartered in Spokane. This is uh, home in many ways. We've raised our families here. And we just want to support the community and be the employer of choice. Charlie Wolf, uh, kind of fun to be on the opposite side of uh, the stage. A lot of you guys know me from the work with the city, but uh, tonight I get to represent Uptick Studios, where I'm COO of uh, Strategy and Operations, uh, leading architecture and design firm in the area. Um, we deal a lot with real estate development and a lot of the policies that the city is, is working through, so it's an exciting uh, time for us to be in, in architecture and development. And tonight, I guess I get the honor to recognize the best new business to consumer company. Uh, this company is definitely revolutionizing an ancient industry that every one of you has, has been a part of. Um, a little bit of a, a similar story, serial entrepreneur, but uh, definitely a phoenix rising um, and uh, an awesome story for Spokane. Um, this, uh, this company is bringing together a platform for efficient transactions, but uh, clarity and um, transparency for, for buyers, uh, standardization of the platform, um, and, and highest and best value for, for sellers. So tonight, again, it's my honor to welcome Dorsey to the stage as our business to consumer winner of the 25 <laughs> Platform that creates an auction style dynamic that happens when you're buying a home. This is how most people across the world buy their home, just not here in the United States. Right now, the traditional process is a blind offer process, meaning you're blind to the price. The price that's listed isn't the actual price you pay for the home. This is a really miserable experience. So Dorsey was built to bring transparency to the home buying process where buyers know exactly what it takes to win, sellers get the highest price, and real estate agents can earn more in less time. So over the last couple of years, people have had the ability to work from anywhere. We've made a very conscious decision to work from Spokane. It's the place we love, the quality of life, the outdoors, the work ethic of the people here is second to none. Up 
here, it feels really good. As you guys know, startups are incredibly difficult and sometimes they don't end well. Um, so, uh, but one thing I'm incredibly thankful for is second chances. Um, thank God that those things exist. I think all of us have you know, called on that card before. So I'd like to bring everybody up from the Dorsey team who's given me a second chance uh, to be up here on stage tonight. So why don't you guys yeah. We've realized our sales pitch is a little long. Thanks, Charlie. Charlie's my neighbor, um, so I paid him to be up here. Uh, we are, our new sales pitch is we are the Justin Timberlake of home auctions. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much. We are excited to be here. We're excited to be a part of Spokane, and, uh, and thank you for believing in us. Super pleased to be here with everybody tonight. Uh, it's awesome to be live again. That is pretty bright. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kevin Cox. I'm with CLA. Uh, CLA is, is uh, one of the top providers of uh, professional services in the country. Uh, we actually focus uh, a lot on private little businesses and owners, and we love working with entrepreneurs, and that's why we're proud to be a, a major sponsor tonight. I'm super excited to be here. Um, Fortunately, have quite a few friends in the, in the crowd, and uh, it's great to shake hands and see people again. Uh, with that, I get the very privileged honor to be part of this lovely evening because it's been awesome information tonight, and uh, to present the most um, lofty and ambitious winner for the Ignite 25 plus 5. And so with that, um, I know a few of us have had cocktails, so I had to bring a note because this is pretty interesting. <laughs> this group is leading the quest for decarbonization by providing advanced technologies. Right, what? <laughs> Same thing. Fortunately, I had a little bit of time for some notes and some research. I highly encourage all of you to go to the website. It is a fascinating story and what they can do. Some of the things you see on the, on the website, it, 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 reducing the carbon dioxide emissions by 25% on large buildings. It's, it's an amazing, amazing story. So very, very pleased to welcome up um, Carbon Quest. advanced technologies to building owners to help them decarbonize their buildings. There's a concept called circular economy, and we're playing in a carbon circular economy where we're capturing CO2 from buildings and selling that to companies that are using the CO2 to manufacture new and innovative products. So an example of that is green concrete products. We're putting CO2 into concrete and selling that back into manufacturing of new buildings. Buildings in cities represent roughly 70% of their entire emissions. And so attacking and helping building owners with solutions that help them dramatically reduce their emissions provides a, an amazing opportunity for us at Carbon Quest to make a big difference in the battle for climate change. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks to the small but mighty Ignite team and all the sponsors of this amazing event. We at Carbon Quest are mission driven and we're excited to be part of this solution in the battle for climate change. Um, we came out of the dark days of COVID. We uh, have this saying, GSD, I don't know if you've heard GSD, politely it's get stuff done. So we've been two years getting stuff done built our prototype now we got our first system installed in new york city and it's humble beginnings but uh, we're excited about the future and the the mission that we have to help decarbonize looking forward to uh, to growing in this community i was just thinking back about all the stories i came here i've been fortunate to be a part of five different startup companies but i came here in in 2000 when my baby, who's now 23, um, 
and you know we we had no idea what what this adventure was going to be like but my wife followed this crazy idea <coughs> we came here to join the telecom startup and we did a bad battery energy storage startup here with with doug and we're super excited about the opportunity to carbon quest and the growth and to be a part of this community we're humbled to, there's so many great companies i'm new to the to the ignite um, community and i'm I know very few of you, but I'm looking forward to me meeting you, and uh, we're just honored to be recognized for this award. So thank you and a shout out to the Carbon Quest team. Well, good evening. I'm David Condon. I'm with Primera, and believe it or not, at Primera, we're the only Washington State headquartered health plan. And what's awesome coming into this position is it allows me to come back into the community and we're only here and in Alaska. So when we look at who we invest in and what we do, it's about here in Washington. And actually we wake up every morning on trying to figure out how we make healthcare work better. And I'll tell you, maybe serendipitous, but tonight I'm here to, to really uh, honor and to, to um, and to select the winner of the most socially impactful uh, company of the 25 plus five. And I'll tell you, this is where it's at. Um, David, come on up from Parrot, uh, is a platform that helps people with disabilities with smart communication and telecom. And I'll tell you, our, uh, this is the place where we wanna be in healthcare, is not only helping all of us, but helping those and our loved ones um, and the work that Parrot does. So it's pretty cool that I get to be part of this announcement. So with that, roll the film and David, come on up. Poly, Poly is an assistive platform to give people with uh, severe disability uh, smart voice and telecare by uh, speaking in real time with anyone using their uh, eyes or their hands or whatever they can use from their body. I got inspired by many people, including Stephen Hawking. And I do believe there are many people like Stephen Hawking out there, and they are just missing accessible technology to be the next Stephen Hawking. We decided to have parrots based in Spokane because of uh, first, the ecosystem here is very uh, encouraging for us to grow. I love the nature, I love the people. People are very nice, very friendly. We want to be the leaders in uh, telehealth, telecares for people with physical communication challenges uh, worldwide. And this is the guy that brought his company to the city of Trent. Well, there you go. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I want to thank um, all the family, friends, um, believers, supporters. And a lot of actually in this room, I would just mention our investor Tom, of course, Ignite, and we have also Teresa from uh, Gleason Institute and Matt's Pla uh, Place uh, Foundation. And I'm really grateful for this, and uh, you will see us doing more. And we are really passionate about this mission, and I hope you can join us to do more to help all these people to be more independent and free and uh, making more uh, greater impact. Thank you so much, all. Fantastic, so uh, once again, I'm, I'm Richard Gennady. Uh, Mark said a couple things about the flywheel, so I'm gonna go off script and, and brag about Lee and Hayes for a second here. Uh, people don't know about Lee and Hayes, but we are the nation's best intellectual property firm. Uh, our client list, uh, Amazon, Alibaba, the number one IP firm for each one of these. Amazon, Alibaba, Cisco, Facebook, Square, Caterpillar. And we do it out of Spokane. We're seven offices across the country, we do it in Spokane. 95% of our revenue comes outside the region. We don't pay on a local scale, we pay on a national scale, and we do it out of Spokane. And so I'm incredibly proud of that. But that's not why I'm here. <laughs> I am here to uh, announce the winner of the 25 plus 5 award for the company most likely to achieve. $100 million of revenue in the next five years. This company uh, is 
headquartered uh, in North Idaho, uh, has offices throughout the world, is one of the real hidden gems in this region that people don't know about. I feel like Kindred Spirits with Lee and Hayes that way. Uh, that is really the standard and measurement for mobile apps, allowing customers to put higher and lower weight to control their advertising spend. An amazing company out of Sandpoint, Idaho, the winner of the 25 plus five award for the company most likely to achieve 100 million in revenue, surprise me not already there, is Cochaba. Five years. Cochaba builds technology oh. that is a SaaS product that is the definitive source of, of, of truth for all of your ad spend if you're a brand. We have become really the standard in measurement of mobile apps. We enable our customers to configure the way in which our system is uh, used across their spectrum of ad display. And what that means is they can put higher or lower weight on different ad units and have it uh, translate to them on where the effective spend is being applied. We love serving our customers. We love being a, a key ingredient that they use in their success. That, and I, I often talk with them and with, with our team that I want to be the difference maker. I want to be the reason why they win. Awesome. That guy tells me we have two years, not five years. So <laughs> super excited to, uh, to be here accepting this award on behalf of Cochava. We are in North Idaho. Um, all the stuff you heard about Spokane, we um, celebrate in a little town in North Idaho with 15 minutes to ski mountains. Super excited to be here. Thank you for Ignite Northwest. Um, and we're excited to put a B on some valuation here shortly. So um, thank you. thank our sponsors for this evening, including CLA, the Spokane Journal of Business, Primera, and Uptick Studios, with a very special thank you to Tribe Media Lab for video production. They do all of our production, everything from our spotlights to our interview series to this evening. And also a special thank you to Lee and Hayes for being our premier sponsor at Ignite. I hope all of the entrepreneurs in the room this evening will pitch their next big idea at Sparks Weekend, which takes place April 29th to May 1st. The winning team will receive an investment award of $50,000, underwritten by mind to market and Tom Simpson. A big thank you to Uptick Studios for printing special plus five awards tonight. So if the plus five will join me up here as we close, which includes Hydracide, Parrots Inc., Perpetua, Square Keg and Tamarack Aerospace will make their way forward as we close, I can give you one. And I hope that you know that all of you, um, investors, entrepreneurs, community leaders, you are what is fueling innovation in our region and making the Spokane area the place to be. So thanks again for joining us. I hope you'll stay and enjoy more drinks and food and enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank you.